Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. We can all agree that Roland created quite a few respectable drum machines. However, since then their target's demographic has dwindled. Analog enjoyers have joined the cult of Uli, people willing to RTFM are using next generation Scandinavian Abakai and real musicians switched to computers decades ago. Today we are going to talk about TR8S. This 2018 flagship rhythm performer not only boasts a design language that clearly focuses on inner beauty, it also combines the played out sound of the 80s with a workflow of a 90s rampler. At the first glance the TR8S is ticking all the I should have filmed the episode in a white cube boxes. A hefty chunk of robust Batman colored plastic offers everything you might wish for in a traditional drum machine. Eleven unnecessarily labeled drum instruments with rainbow colored DJ style faders provide ACB based models of TR classics internal PCM staples you, you, you use the samples with a maximum length of 180 seconds each and a range of simplified FM engines. The latter were added in a firmware update, just like the smooth CR78 emulation. Plenty of hands-on controls let you tweak predefined and sound-specific parameters and there's one assignable knob per channel. All other aspects of your tones needs to be addressed using the trademark Roland menu diving we know and love since the late 80s. As it should be, kits allow you to save and recall entire sets of sounds and have their own master LFO. While the main sequencer buttons are not velocity sensitive, Roland included a little accelerator pad for our evolution. For more nuanced performances. MPC users might think that's cute, but TR drum machines are all about the step sequencer anyways. Programming 16 step sequences. With swing and accents is as easy as it gets, up to 8 variations can be chained together and there are 2 fills per pattern you can insert manually or using the auto fill in functionality. The sequencer comes with a few features worthy of a post 1989 machine, rolls, substeps for trap hi-hats, and micro timing can be considered standard and Roland threw in electrive like motion recording which also allows for basic electron style parameter locks. Don't expect the elegance of the Swedish originals though. Speaking of, they are the only way to program melodies on the machine that I am aware of, even with a new ACB 808 chromatic bass. Roland FX algorithms are, of course, totally awesome. Per channel processing with filters, compression, drive, and a ring modulator. There are sends for delay, 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 delay and reverb. Reverb. And the master bus lets you insert an obviously SP404 inspired vinyl effect. It's got the best implementation of scatter I've come across yet. 
file handling and computer integration are a bit clunky. Although an SD card slot is more than welcome, samples need to be loaded into the internal memory first, which is limited to a total of around 600 seconds in mono. As the TR8S is missing overbridge-like functionality, multi-channel USB audio didn't gel well with my setup, please tell me there's a way to use USB MIDI without a driver and leave a comment if the Serato connection works for you. The multitude of freely assignable outputs totally tickles my fancy, although there's no through, full-sized MIDI connectors are much appreciated and the dedicated trigger output is inherently awesome, thanks to Klangfarbe for lending me one of their competitively priced floor models. The TR8S is a Roland drum machine through and through, for better or worse. Is it worthy of the great legacy of its iconic ancestors? You have already heard the 8S in today's intro tune. Yes, I reprogrammed the whole thing on the machine. No, it's no fun at all and maybe there are better sounding synths. This is a moment I've been waiting for for a very long time. Surprises here. The faders are perfect for jamming. ACB delivers the classic sounds with a modern edge, and you can wade through a generous serving of mature PCM cheese. Being able to load user samples is a real improvement over its non S predecessor. Time to suffer through another melody programming session, hook up those sweet multiple outputs, and give the scatter based fills a go. was funkier than expected. Multiple outputs are great if you have a history of messing up levels during a jam and although the 8S is not a full-fledged groove box, it can carry an entire arrangement. Let's push things even further in. No 808s were harmed during the production of this Bad Gear finale. Dark Juke meets Footwork Dub, whatever step cone blower. <laughs> The TR8S is easy to use, filled with quintessential sounds and offers professional features many of its competitors are missing. A performance-friendly mixer and basic sample player add to its versatility. However, a lot has changed since the heyday of classic rhythm composers and while the deep sound design possibilities and workflow hacks of more forward-thinking manufacturers might not be everyone's cup of tea, the strange mix of retro UI and half-baked contemporary features combined with seemingly deliberate limitations when it comes to tonal sounds is a shame given the otherwise powerful machine. All that being said, it might also be the last generation of big Roland drum machines that doesn't rely on cloud-based plugins and the controls of a smart home thermostat. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 